of parasympathetic nerve system versus sympathetic nerve system. Remember, these are part of the autonomic nerve system. They function without you consciously thinking about it. So I want to talk about parasympathetic. And I want to talk about sympathetic. I'm just going to basically talk about the anatomy and what they control and affect. Parasympathetic nerve system, if we looked at, if we looked at the brain uh, in the spinal cord like this, parasympathetic nerve system are nerves that come out of the neck and come out of the sacral area. So out of the neck and sacral. Some people call these the feed and breed nerve system. Why? Because to digest food, it's good to be calm. It's good to have nice, smooth muscle action. And notice this, when I get all worked up, sometimes I don't feel like eating. I've got too much sympathetic nerve supply. Uh, it, when it comes to breeding, part of the intimacy act has to do with parasympathetic. And then part of that has to do with sympathetic. So there's actually two different nerve systems involved in that. And that's not the discussion I'm trying to have right now, but that's uh, where people get the feed and breed portion. So when it comes to sympathetic, when we look at the spine, we say that the neck is cervical. That would be a C prefix. The mid back is thoracic. That's a T prefix. And the low back is lumbar. That's an L prefix. T1 through L2, the nerves that come off in this part of your spine, so look up, I'm talking about from here to here, those control sympathetic. Sympathetic. This is fight or flight. This is feed and breed. Now, what is, this, what is the significance of this? When you get upset, when you get worked up, you get sympathetic stimulation. What does that do? It increases your heart rate, increases blood supply to your muscles, increases your respiratory rate, everything that it takes to haul booty or to fight, fight or flight. Sometimes it's, you have to stay and fight, sometimes it's good to run, okay? Both are options in life, right? The problem, let me talk about the conflict though, class. Here's the conflict. The conflict is you and I don't really have a good way to dissipate these sympathetic hormones on a day-to-day -day basis. My relatives 100 years ago, when it was the crack of dawn, they were in the field with a hoe working on corn and cottons and soybeans all day long. They didn't come to, the, they didn't really make a trip, big trip back to the house until granny had supper cooking almost dark. They burned off all of these sympathetic chemicals in their body. But you and I, what do we do? The reason we get out, we, we, we leave the house to go outside is to get in the car. We're not going to work. And so because we don't really burn this energy off so well, it tends to build up in us. And so what do we do? We get out on the road, somebody cuts in front of us, and bam, we got something to say to these people. It might be with a hand gesture, it might be with yelling, it might be screaming, it might be hitting the horn, right? It could be any of these. That's sympathetic. That's road rage right there, right? So we have to figure out a way, whether it's going walking, that might be a simple way to do it that most people can do. But some kind of exercise every, every day to burn off some of these sympathetic hormones, they're great. They were great, especially back in the day when we were surviving off of little, having to defend the place against the outlaws and all that, but that's not how most of us roll. And so even though this suited us really well at a, at a time in our past, and when I say that, I mean in our familial past, it can be a plague on us now. It can result in cardiovascular problems and I think emotional and mental problems as well. So it's kind of interesting to see how it, the anatomy interacts with how we live and the things that we should or shouldn't do. Let me, I want to link this a little bit with chiropractic, though, before we leave. Because the upper neck and the low back 
feed the parasympathetic nerve supply. We believe that when we adjust segments in the upper neck and the low back, that this kind of helps slow down the body and calm it down sometimes. Whereas some people respond better to adjustments to subluxations or misalignments in the sympathetic area, in the middle of the back. Some people, if they're very, very sick, should not have mixed systems. For instance, if someone is, is very ill, it might not be a good idea to give them an upper neck adjustment and an upper back adjustment because here we've got conflicting nerve system. We've got slow down and speed up information being given to the spine. What does the, what does the brain listen to? Not always a big, a big problem and probably usually not a big problem just because most people are relatively healthy and they're not facing a big crisis. But sometimes it's good to, as a chiropractor just to adjust one segment at a time. That way, as a practitioner, I can see did this help or not. If it helped, I was in the right area. If it didn't help, I need to keep looking. I need to keep figuring out what I can do to help this person. Parasympathetic and sympathetic nerve system. 